wonderful. Um, my name is Sam Sedley, uh, as Jamie said, I do work a lot with James, we've done a lot of work together. Uh, very quickly, my background, uh, I came to this field by chance in the days before we called these things IoT. Um, I used to, um, about 15 years ago, I, I decided to look at um, these things on networks that sit there and are unattended by anyone. So I looked at network CCTV systems, found lots of vulnerabilities, then looked at heating, lighting, air conditioning, found loads more vulnerabilities. And the amazing thing was when I spoke to vendors, every single one of them said, oh, we leave security to the network, level, uh, to the network people. And I said, well, so th what that means is if I'm a rubbish hacker and I guess your password, it takes me five years, you won't know. If I'm a really good hacker and I've got really, really good, strong tools and I can guess your password within a couple of seconds, you still won't know. And the guy said, oh, didn't think of that. But one, at one time when I was asking all these vendors, what do you do about security? Um, one vendor once said to me, oh, we have uh, three levels of security. I thought, oh, this sounds interesting. And he said, well, we have admin level uh, security, we have super admin level security, and we have normal user level security. So there were the three fantastic levels. And that was the last time I spoke to a vendor at that time regarding security. So on to the presentation. Uh, I'm looking at smart environments. Um, most of what I'm going to be talking about is from a paper that James and I wrote. It's not to promote the paper, but really some of the content is from there. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do if you're getting started. And we tried to look, when we looked at uh, the idea of smart environments and getting started in smart buildings and smart cities, was what is it, what's a base level thing that um, organizations that have got some sort of money what can they start with? And that's really what this whole session is about. We try to look at the whole of the supply chain. So there's lots of things here that may be relevant for some of you, may not be relevant for others, may be relevant for some and not others and so on. So there is a lot in here. Uh, I'm going to zoom through this. Uh, if you've got any issues with any of it, please do ask me questions and I can get you the paper. And it is a basic starting point. It's not meant to be the end game it is a starting point nothing more than that um a disclaimer yes i uh, together with james we are both uh, co-vice chairs of the smart building group um and we have produced a white paper which is an introductory white paper but most of the thoughts and anything i say here are mine and please do not think negatively if you d disagree with anything please do say so because there are things that I, we do get wrong uh, mm. and maybe i haven't explained well and that's fine as well are we moving on? Yep, good. So really what I'm going to look at is uh, smart buildings or smart environments, stakeholders, technologies, and some of the recommendations. And here we go. So definition. Um, this definition is mine. We are trying to adopt it. If you come along to the workshop with the uh, flyer, with the flyer I was handing out earlier on, what we're going to do at this session is we are going to try and come up with a definition for the working group that we are going to stick to in terms of all the other guidance that we produced. So far, we decided earlier on this year when we had our work, first workshop not to come up with a definition. What we came out with, the scope of what the group would look at and how it would look at that and then move on from there. So the definition. Um, definition I, I, I've come up with, I've tried to think of it um, as a, 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 a definition that will apply to smart homes, smart buildings, smart cities, or smart manufacturing. So if you take out the word, whether it's building or environment, you should be able to apply it across all of them theoretically. So what I've come up with is, and what I tried to do was look at a definition that you can use regardless of what type of building you've got. And the only difference that should be made, uh, where you should look at the differences, shouldn't necessarily be in the definition. It should be in a maturity level. Uh, and I'm going to quickly go through those. And we're going to look at, if you come along to the workshop, we are going to look at maturity levels as well. OK, so basic definition, smart building is one which utilizes several different sensor technology systems to collect data and sharing it via a network to unified management system to take actions or make decisions in order to provide benefits uh, to building managers, occupants and visitors. Previously, most definitions I'd come across were from vendors and every single one of those were trying to claim that space for themselves and I found that frustrating and they're limited or extended far more than they should do. There wasn't something that tried to encapsulate 
um, buildings that are old buildings that you could make into smart buildings. It was either all you had to scrap everything and start everything from scratch or um, a mixture of a variety of things, but nothing seemed to work for everything. So really, what, if you break down those components, we're talking about connectivity, we're talking about sensors, and they're included in the definition, the fact that there's a network, that you're talking about a unified uh, system, and actions being taken, and stakeholder benefits. That's what you're looking for. But part of the prerequisite of this has to be that uh, security is a prerequisite. And th it, it, that has to be an implied prerequisite. How can you have something that's smart that isn't able to protect itself? It's a bit like smart people, smart individuals, or intelligent individuals. How can you be a smart individual, or intelligent individual, if you don't know how to protect yourself either? So uh, what I wanted to try and make sure we do is, rather than including the, the security aspect of it, within the definition, it should be implied as part and parcel. Um, so that's the key part of the definition, but the thing is, a building only becomes smart when all systems are connected so that the data from them can be used to make better benefit decisions, and until that point, it's only a building that uses smart technology, and that's quite important because of all the definitions I'd seen, you could quite easily lump so many buildings as being a smart building just because they bought one or two different systems. Equally, if you follow that um, definition through, you could have a smart city. And many of the smart cities I've seen around the world are not really smart cities. They are smart infrastructure projects, nothing more than smart infrastructure projects. And maybe there's two or three smart infrastructure projects, and they've called that a smart city. Look at London. London's been called a smart city, but in reality, what we've got is uh, London Transport, um, which is very, very smart, and that's the infrastructure. Everything else about it is not necessarily smart, and there are a few other infrastructure projects which make those infrastructure projects smart, but that doesn't give us a smart city. Equally, in terms of what we're looking at here in the definition, um, until they are working together by using the data appropriately, they're not necessarily smart buildings or smart anything. In terms of maturity, uh, I've tried to sort of capture... Um, from a definition, uh, sorry, not a definition, from uh, a paper that was presented a couple of years ago uh, by Sheffield University. And they, they looked at uh, four, sorry, three or four levels, and really what I did was I took, I've taken those and I've gone backwards and created a zero and a minus one as well. So what have we got here? So what we have got is... The, uh, the, the minus one, which is a traditional building that may or may not use any number of non-integrated systems controlled by facilities management. And that's really where most buildings are from yesteryear. The zero level is new technology and just sticking new technology in, but not really integrating it. Where you come to actually being mature, and that first rung, is where you've got technology that's reactive. And the definition... Uh, in, in terms of the maturity levels, is all around the control flow. And, and the control flow is what determines what, what level of maturity you've got. So reactive is, is the first level. The second level is adaptive, so the building is adapting to what needs to happen. The third level is being predictive. And the, the, what I have added to these levels that were presented in the, in the paper is that fourth level, which is called responsible, which is basically that the building is able to take a whole range of responsible decisions that you've given it permission to take on your behalf at the right time. Um, so this is all from this paper that's here at the bottom. It's a paper that was uh, presented, as I said, way back, I think about uh, 2014. Last time I checked it, this link, it did work. That was earlier on this year. So going on from maturity models and definitions, the stakeholders. In terms of stakeholders uh, and the smart building group, we've looked at a whole range of them, and there are far too many stakeholders. And all these stakeholders do have some role to play. The question sometimes is, what role are, uh, should they be playing? And in this list here, there's 36 different groups of stakeholders. You can easily add more. Uh, there's no shortage of stakeholders you can throw into that. Um, but so if we're looking at it um, from the point of view of getting started in implementing security controls, really what you could do is pull out from all of that and regroup some of those into what I've put down nine groups here. And so the owners, the specifiers, manufacturers, developers, marketing, systems designers, integrators, facilities, and ma uh, maintenance. Oh, 
Yep, 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 that's it. So really, one of the things that we're looking at in the Smart Building Group, for example, is we're trying to think of from end to end, from the building owners, manufacturers, integrators, all the way through to the end, through to decommissioning, to see what is it that we can provide that is at the very basic level uh, in terms of guidance that people can get, take away and actually start making use of. So in terms of the technologies that, we're, that are involved that will give you a smart building... Uh, there's, there's a couple of technologies that are key. Uh, one is that the technologies for smart systems do involve some level of artificial intelligence. If you look at some of the vendors out there, almost every single vendor have jumped on the cloud bandwagon. They've jumped on the uh, big data analysis bandwagon. Now they're jumping on the artificial intelligence bandwagon. There's so many vendors I've spoken to who will claim that they've got artificial intelligence. In reality, what they've got is they've got big data analysis. They'll ask you for all your data, and then they'll give you something back, which they've called intelligence, but really they've just done some work in the back um, without using artificial intelligence, and there's a lot around. So artificial intelligence is one of the key things that will determine how you move up and how quickly you move up in terms of using the control flow to uh, move up uh, in, in the maturity levels. Next, we've got uh, the big data analytics. Yes, big data analytics is important, um, and it will always be important. It's used in so many different ways in existing systems already. Uh, it's just being confused and abused by some of the vendors out there. The next uh, is, is in terms of edge computing. Uh, many manufacturers are beginning to use edge computing. The they are driving some of the decisions that we're talking about right to the edge so that they can be made without data leaving the device or necessarily the system either. And that's going to make a difference in terms of technologies. The right data. The right data is important. The right data at the right time to be able to make some of those decisions. Uh, it, 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 without it, it's not going to work. And that collection of data. And at the moment, the strange thing is... Every system out there collects lots and lots of data. They're not thinking about what the right data is. They're trying to think, what more data can we collect? And, and, and rather than thinking scientifically, right, to do what we're trying to do, to try and create a smart system, this is the data we should be collecting. This is the data we should be saving. Um, there are lots of examples I can give you. Uh, and the last one, I think I'm right here, is open data. More and more uh, open data is available, and that includes lots of data that the state is main, be, making available. Uh, TfL, Transport for London, they make loads of open data available, whether it's to do with uh, the London Underground, whether it's to do with parking, whether it's to do with traffic, and they are examples, and there's going to be more and more uh, open data sources that are available, how you use it to your advantage will determine also how um, useful your system becomes, whether it's a smart home or, or, or a smart building, smart city, whatever. Recommendations. These fall into... Now, there are lots and lots of ways of breaking this down. In our paper, I think we broke down into about 10 ways. Really, um, it, it, you can break it down into as many ways as you can. I, for, for today's purposes, I try to keep it simple. In terms of getting started, what you need to do is, is to treat the project, whatever project it is, like a critical project, uh, any other critical project. And, and, and the way of doing that is actually starting to have a project manager for the project and a proper one who, who has responsibility for security aspects. And we've um, spoken to, in, in, in lots of... Uh, to, to, to building managers and started to look at things. And when we spoke, looked at them when they're starting, quite often they haven't got someone that has an overview of security. It is still, in many respects, in smart environments, an afterthought. Uh, agree the outputs, agree policies, plans, whatever it is that you're trying to do, right at the outset and, and monitor it throughout the phase. Share some of those outputs with all the relevant parties. Um, in terms of consumers... Um, make sure that you are considering what is upcoming in terms of legislation uh, for consumer IoT. And I'm sure, a quick show of hands, anyone know that the, uh, there's legislation coming next year for uh, consumer IoT? Yep, a few hands. Good, good. Next year, I mean, the government uh, a few years ago came up with a code of practice, uh, and after that code of practice, they're now making it, in, making it into legislation together with the EU and so on. I'm going to go through these really quickly now because I've been told my time is coming to an end. Um, standards and frameworks. Again, there's some simple things that you can do in terms of using cyber essentials, how you use it, going to a plus and moving up from one stage to the next. These are very, very basic things. There's nothing that advanced necessarily. 
uh, that you need to do. Uh, product strategy and support, that is very important that you get that right up front and publicize what you're doing, your roadmaps that you have, integration that you've got with other products and other suppliers, um, product system in terms of the solution that you have, uh, getting that, um, and, and that, that it, it, appointing the right sort of people who are going to push things and drive things throughout the whole organization. Um, policy, uh, sorry, privacy and data protection. We have written a white paper on that, um, James and I, uh, th there is a link, I think, somewhere in here. Yes, I have. It's, it's over there in guidance. You can get hold of that white paper. It is about smart buildings and smart cities and how you can implement uh, GDPR within that environment. Um, I think I'm coming towards the end now. Convert security operations. Many smart buildings that we've seen and, uh, and smart cities, they've done lots of things that may be right, but what they haven't done in many cases is they haven't got a secure, uh, sorry, a, a security operations center specifically for the smart building. They're still working in a way where they've got physical and logical security separately. You need to be bringing them together if you are going to have a smart building, and that's one of the important things that, that will differentiate whether or not smart um, environment actually is a smart environment. Marketing, I should go through this one very quickly because I'm coming to the end and I'm sure there aren't that many marketers here. And uh, James is waving, so yes, I have finished. Thanks very much. Okay, if you've got any questions, I am here. Thank you.